What is up everybody, Golden Holden here, and today we are going to be looking into plating onto non-conductive materials such as this 3D printed dog ring holder. And we're going to be using a, non, a nickel conductive coating, and we're going to be just spraying that onto this object. And I know on the market there is lots of different options to do, such as this nickel conductive paint. We're not going to do that today, we might do that in another video. So let's get right into that process. Before we get started in this process, we do want to just look at the bottle for any instructions and follow them as required. And I'm also going to be wearing some safety gloves, safety glasses, and a respirator mask or a paint mask. And we'll be going outside in a well-ventilated area to spray this object. So. Uh, let's get right into it. All right, before I get started, I'm not going to be spraying the bottom of this because it will be laying flat on a desk or something. So I'm just going to be spraying the top and all the um, sides and stuff. So, yeah, and then we're going to let it sit out for about 24 hours and dry, and then we're going to apply more coats to it. This is going to be day two of spraying this item. All right, it's been 24 hours and this is day three, so I'm gonna spray it one more time. So it's been three days of painting this thing in our conductive paint and now we need to make it so it's a lot more conductive because this paint it is conductive but if we were to plate it how it is right now um, the where we clip it it would only spread along this part and it would build up more condu conductivity as it went down the piece and it would spread kind of so it would be plating this area if we clipped it on this foot a lot more than it would on the rest of the body. So what we wanna do is make an even piece of plating area so it will be conductive throughout it evenly and be able to plate good. So what we have here is we have this very, very thin copper tape, this conductive copper tape. And what we're going to do is I'm going to be taping the bottom of this and you can do this at the beginning of this process, so you just paint over it. But since this is just the bottom of the piece, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna be putting our piece of tape along here. So it's making this whole bottom area conductive once we clip it. And that way it will plate a lot more evenly on this piece. So I will get to doing that right now and I will show you it after we have taped it all up. So what I'm doing right here is I'm going to be making a tab for me to be able to connect to so it's more structurally sound. So I'm actually going to fold this on itself. See how the foil is not very strong and it just ripped right there. I'm just going to fold it on itself so we have a lot more stability on this and it will be easier to clip when we're in our bath. So I'm going to do it on both sides and try to make it so it has more structure, which it's kind of hard because this is copper and it does crumple a little bit. So, all right. So now the next step after we do these tabs is we need to actually paint this one more time. This is why I'm saying you could have done this at the beginning of the process, but um, it doesn't really matter now because we have it painted. So 
I'm going to paint over this and then we'll let it dry for another 24 hours and they'll come back and when we put it in our bath we'll have these tabs that we can clip to in order for it to plate a lot more effectively. All right, so we just sprayed this thing and it's been over 24 hours since we did that. And now the next step is going to be plating this in our bright acid copper solution. And we're gonna see something a little different than normal with this piece. And it's gonna be that when we're plating it, where it's more conductive is going to plate heavier than the, the further ends because it's not a solid piece of metal. And it's not super conductive, it's going to plate a little strange. So we're gonna see it spread from probably the bottom where it's touching and spread up to the end of these legs on it. So we'll just plate this item for about five minutes, take it out and look at it and see how well it's going. And then we'll move on to the next steps. All right, so we're at our tank of bright acid copper and we're about to put our piece in. I just have our tank at 1.5 volts and it is at room temperature because it is in a non-heated beaker and we're going to just plate this item for five minutes and see how well it goes. We don't want to electro clean or surface activate this item because we've seen with items in the past with this type of paint on it that it does remove the paint and so you want to try to avoid electro cleaning it and surface activating it before you put it in the bright acid copper. You don't want to do that. So we're just going to put it in and see how well it goes. All right, so our five minutes is up and we're just going to take this out and just look at it. And you can kind of see that it's kind of dull and this is just at five minutes, so if you want this a lot shinier, you can put it in here for a lot longer, which that's what we're going to do in this case. But this does have enough copper. If you wanted to plate onto it right now, you could. But for the time being, we're just going to put it back in here. And we're going to plate it for a little longer than the five minutes and we'll try to make it as shiny as we can, and then we'll move on to our next steps. All right, so it's been quite a long time of this being in here, and I can see from here that there is some buildup. Let me just rinse this off really quick. There is some buildup. You can see on the ear right here, those little jagged pieces, and also on the tips of the feet. Yeah, just right there. So, oh, and on this leg. So we're gonna get some sandpaper and just lightly sand it and get it so it's a little more shiny. And then from there, we'll go on to our next steps. So right here, you can see some buildup on the feet of this item. And we're just gonna go through and sand those down and use kind of a rough sandpaper. You can see the buildup on the chest too. It's kind of rough. So we're just gonna sand everything down to make it smooth and look a lot neater and nicer and a lot shinier. You can see right here that it's not shiny and then I sanded it and now it is shiny. So I'm just gonna go through and do that to the whole piece and see how it turns out. As you can see here, I've sanded the whole piece completely and it looks great. Like there's really shiny spots on it and then there's some matte kind of looking spots on it, but overall this piece looks really good after sanding it. So we're gonna go on to our process and continue with that. Now that we got this piece all cleaned up and sanded and looking really nice, we need to now put it through the electro clean and then into the surface activator. And then we'll plate it in our nickel and then our gold. And it should look pretty good. All right, so we got our part ready to go into our electro clean. And we'll just activate this quickly, or electro clean it quickly. And then we'll put it into our activator. All right, now we'll rinse this off. 
Take it out. Give it a good rinse and then we'll go into our surface activator. All right, now we will go into our surface activator. Okay, rinse that off. And now for our nickel. All right, now into our nickel where it will be in there for about two to, mm, I would say two to three minutes. We'll see how it goes. All right, I'm gonna take it out and check it. Um, it looks like it needs a lot more nickel on it, so we're gonna just put it in there for a little longer. All right, so we've played this just for a little longer than normal that you would in the Pro Lab, and it looks pretty good. So we're gonna just dip it into our rinse water and then into our gold. All right, now we're gonna go into our gold and we'll plate that for the desired time that we would want. So I'll just put it in and clip it on. All right, so now our item is done being gold plated and that looks really good. We're gonna just rinse it off and then we'll show the final product of what it looks like. All right, here is that 3D printed piece plated in gold. It turned out really well. Of course, you can still see the 3D printed lines. Those are always gonna be really hard to get rid of unless you sand your 3D printed part so it's smooth. But yeah, this piece looks really good and I'm happy how it turned out. Here are just a few more examples of gold plated items that were non-conductive, such as a golf ball and a clay model that someone has made. And we have, of course, our 3D printed option. And honestly, the options are kind of endless when you start opening it up into this area of gold plating. And so the limits are kind of just placed on you guys on what you want to play and what you can play. And if you do want to do these options, there are tons of different options of plating sprays and paints that you kind of have to do your own research and figure out what works best for you. But of course, we're here to help you guys and answer any questions. So if you do have any questions, please go to our tech email and just ask them to us. And if you guys enjoyed this video, thanks so much for watching. And please leave us comments of anything you want to see next.